So now let's say we took these 12 physical servers and we virtualized them. So now they're actually 12 virtual machines running on one physical server. So instead of these 12 physical servers, we've just got one. And this one physical server is running our hypervisor, which is ESXi version 5. Remember, a hypervisor is what makes it possible to run virtual machines. So it's our operating system, which is ESXi, that is actually installed on these disks. And through that operating system, we're running our virtual machine. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So here I'm logged in to vCenter, and we're going to see how to do this in a bit. We've got our one physical server here. I'm calling it PHX ESXi01. And down here, we have our 12 virtual machines. And each of these virtual machines has its own virtual hardware. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to right click on it, edit settings. So this virtual machine has virtual memory. You can see it's configured with 4 gigs. Virtual CPU, it's got one. Virtual video card, virtual VMCI device, virtual SCSI controller, virtual hard disk, virtual CD DVD drive, virtual network adapter, and virtual floppy drive. So all the things that used to be physical back when we had these 12 servers, so each server would have its own physical network card, its own drives, its own memory. So all of that that used to be physical is now virtual. And the beauty of this is, is that the operating system that we were running on the physical server, like Windows Server 2000, thinks all this stuff is real. So let's say that old physical server had 4 gigs of memory. It had one CPU in it. It had one hard disk, one CDD, DVD drive. As far as the operating system is concerned, which is Windows Server 2000 on our virtual machine here, it doesn't know the difference, whether it's virtual hardware or physical hardware. So if we cancel out, we can actually take a look at the console of one of these virtual machines. I'll go ahead and open it up. And this one just happens to be running Windows Server 2008. And remember, this is all happening on one physical server. So this server has its own network card. It has its own IP address, its own drives. If I open up Explorer here, go to Computer, it's got its own C drive. So the operating system thinks all that's real, but it's actually virtual hardware, and all the virtual hardware is handled by ESXi, which is our hypervisor. So I'm going to move this over here, and let's take a look at another one of our virtual machines here, Server 02. Let's go ahead and open the console, and this one just happens to be running Windows Server 2003. So I'll go ahead and log in. And all of these virtual machines are running at the same time. And they're all running on one physical machine. But as far as they're concerned, they've all got their own separate hardware, just like back in the days when we had our 12 physical servers. So let's take a look at our ESXi host. And that, that's what we're going to call the physical server that has the ESXi operating system. It's called the, the host. So we can take a look at it here. This is a ProLiant DL380G5. It's got eight CPUs. It's actually two physical CPUs that are quad core. And you can see the processor sockets here. That's two cores per sockets, four. So it's got eight logical processors. We can see this one just happens to have 24 gigs of memory. So it's ESXi's responsibility to basically use certain amount of its memory for each virtual machine. And same with processor. So ESXi handles all that. That's, way we're, that's the way we get to utilize all of the resources on our physical server. So again, each virtual machine has its own virtual hardware. So if I go ahead and look at Server 02's virtual hardware, this is all its own. I could very easily add more virtual hardware or remove virtual hardware because it's all virtual. It's not physical hardware. And each one of these virtual machines, it's running its own operating system. And all of it is happening on one physical server.